Hi everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today and I'm doing a wee mini whisky muddler Very very good fly for the wild browns but also I mean it's very effective for rainbows as well in the, in the reservoirs it's a really really good pattern as always I will put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel get access to the members only content and be entered into the giveaways you can also subscribe hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos that's all, appreciate it so I've got my hook in my vice, it's a size 10 Kamazan B175 right so this fly is quite a bit smaller than um, the sort of traditional whisky fly and the whisky muddler that we used to, used to see years ago this that they would have been like probably eight long shanks uh, or bigger um, but tying them in this smaller size I find they're much more effective actually um, you're still getting the muddler head to draw them up the bright bit of colour but it's smaller so the fish have got no or less hesitation if you like in eating it folk used to complain about the the old ones you know the fish are coming up but they're not quite eating it and they're chasing it or they're taking it short some people would say and they would tie it longer you know they tie the fly shorter on a bigger hook and all that these are better anyway I've run on some uni 8 or fire orange thread I've put a bed the length of the fly and I've just caught in here a length of glow bright number 4 right at, in line with the barb of the hook and I'm going to make a wee fluorescent tag I suppose it's a butt really um, just sort of covering the distance nearly up to the point of the hook and tie that off now I'm going to take this forward to keep my body nice and flat Right, now allow yourself plenty of space at the front because you've got a wing and a hackle to go in after your body and then a muddler head I'll just take my thread back now so I've folded it back and I've taken my thread back tying that down because this is going to be the rib body medium silver tinsel. You can use holographic if you like. So this is a number 12 and it's a, I've got the gold and silver. You can tie these with gold bodies if you want. Um, some folk like a, a gold whiskey. But I always like the silver version. And again I'm coming forward with my thread and touch and turns. And the thread's well waxed, right? There's plenty of grip. I've just caught that wee tag of the silver tinsel. But it's got plenty of grip. And it will actually help stop it sliding as I go forward. So a nice straight turn at the back. And then coming forward, your wee short silver body. You can come if you come a half turn further and then cross it with your thread and it gives you the full length of the silver bodies nice and flat, nice and smooth and you can trim away your waist right and then I'm just going to twist up my rib and then I'll come up the body 
You want to twist it to stop it separating out too much. Another nice variation of this is to use um, have the fluorescent body then rub it with like uh, a silver micro straggle. But I'm just tying it the way I always tied it. So I've tied this off and it's a couple of half hitches. Come away the waist. And then I'm going to come in with some varnish. To protect that floss at the back and over the tinsel. Right, um, I mean if you prefer UV resin use it but I would say that you need to watch when you're putting it onto something like this because there's nothing to hold the resin that much with the tinsel and if anybody any resin goes below the tinsel it's not going to cure which allows it to rehydrate right some of these acrylic resins if they're not fully set they're properly set they'll rehydrate in the water which means that's why they you know that that's the that's like the problem that a lot of folk have with uh, them coming off their buzzers now that are actually they're not properly cured and it's not coherent to the thread so starting my thread again just the same thread this is a dry body that I had and actually I mean if you think about it you're not really saving any time with the UV resin the time that it takes me to tie to change hooks is the same amount of time you'd be picking up your torch and holding it to cure it might actually be quicker with the varnish and then you know if you do six or if you do five or four by the time you've done the four bodies, the first body's ready to go for the wing and the muddler head. So, wing is orange marabou, preferably fluorescent. And the amount that you tie in is up to you. Right, how heavy, how dense do you want your wing? I'm going to put in about that much marabou. Right. I like this amount. Some folk would maybe want a slightly heavier wing. But that's up to them. That's you know. So I've just pinched the tips away to give me a sort of nice wee bunch there. And the length I'm looking for is going to be like something like this, coming just beyond the back of the hook. So I'm going to hold the wing very tightly and just strip away the some of the flu for the marabou there, so that when I tie it in, I'm saving a bit of bulk. And that's. bad. Trim away the waist. And now I'm going to put a wee bit of flash. I've got some red crinkle mirror flash. I'm going to tie it on my side first. Take it over, fold it back. Just a strand, it's enough, it's, it's quite quite a strong flash you get after the crinkle mirror flash, it's, you don't need a ton of it, especially with that silver body as well. Just tidy everything up. And then we're ready for our hackle. It's an orange hen, uh, if you've got a fluorescent one that's better. And 
it can be quite long. Um, you know, you don't need to have a wee short hackle. You, the hackle's got to be adding a bit of movement on the underside of the hook behind that deer hair. You know, the deer hair causes turbulence which allows the marabou and all that to move much better than it normally would. So I've just tied this in by the tip and I've cut the tip, the length of the, what's bare here, right? I'm just trying to keep everything relatively flat. There is a wee bump, but that's going to be eaten up by the wing, uh, by the hackle, sorry. So, I'm just going to take this, going to fold it as I wind, one turn in front of the other. Until, and I'm just going to use it up, I want a good bit of hackle. And then same thing, trim this the length of where I'm tying it in, just to stroke the stuff back and then tie the other up. I mean, obviously if you weren't putting a muddler head you would tie it further up to the front but that's a, this is an effective little uh, mini lure in, its, in and of itself. So for the head I'm using some hot orange deer hair, this is belly hair dyed hot orange. And a decent clump. You, know, you can do it in a single shot, right? You don't, I've not got a huge amount of space there. And you can see there's a lot of fuzz and all that. And, well. There is always a, a fair bit of fuzz, this isn't really bad, this deer here is quite clean, but there's still, I mean, there's what, like I've been able to clean all this broken and fuzzy stuff out, um, just with a couple of pulls of the comb, it's a right good thing to do, right, if you want your deer here to spin well, you should be doing this into the stacker and take it out and take it out with the tips facing the direction you want them to be in right, there's no point in taking it out that way and then turning them in your hand right. I'm just taking away there's some broken ends. There always is. If there's any that you've missed, you'll probably see them when you come to trim the head anyway. I'll just make sure my thread's at the right bit, which is about half a mil maybe in front of the, the tie in of that hackle. Collar length, I mean, you don't want it to be too long. I'm going to come to it the end of the body or something it'll, and it'll be a bit shorter when I spin the hair anyway because of the flaring effect so a couple of loose wraps let that spin just follow up with your thread tighten everything down if you need to you can sort of help it a wee bit just get it around the hook and then just take your thread fo forward With a bunch of hair, try not to trap any. And when you're in front, you can just sweep everything back. It's not bad. I got a wee, wee bit of thread there. And then tie off. And another one. Try 
Come that way. Now, as I said in other videos, you don't really want to trim a muddler on the vice. You're better sitting doing it over the bin, but so you guys can see it. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to come in. I'm just going to cut up to start forming my shape. Go around. Take your time. Get it right. You know, look, don't be, don't be rushing just to get the fly done and then ruin the head and then you need to just take a razor to the lot, you know. Um, I don't mind. When I'm tying my muddlers, I don't mind spending a few minutes per fly, you know, and you get quicker like, if you, as I say, if you tie a batch, maybe you tie all the muddlers that you're going to use, tie, not just a single pattern, and sit and trim them all. Um, you know, by the time you go into your sixth or tenth or whatever you're getting quite you'll get quite quick at it. until you've got a head that you're quite happy with. And, I mean, head shape's kind of personal preference. Some folk like a, a rounder head on their muddlers and some folk like it to be a bit blockier or a bit more conical. You just trim it how you like it so that you fish the fly confidently. And there you go, right that's a whiskey muddler. That's good enough for for me. A wee bump there actually I don't like. It's a bit better. So the last thing then is just to get a bit of varnish on it. Just brush it over that whole eye. And then what I like to do is sort of press it. It just stiffens up the front edge of the, the hair as well, which is a good thing. It helps uh, create a bit more turbulence and a bit more weight. And then just come in and clean your eye. So, I hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines, guys. Bye.